Okay, in this problem, we are given the graph for the velocity of a particular particle over a region of time from 0 seconds to 5 seconds. And we're asked to find a piecewise function for the position function s of t. So let's write that down. We're going to find a piecewise function, mm, ugly s, for s of t. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is define a piecewise function for our velocity function. So this is a calculus topic. I'm not going to be going through how to find the equation of each line, but it's not a bad idea to have two sets of ordered pairs. For example, for the first one, the ordered pair is x is, or I guess t is 0, and v is 2, and the ordered pair down here is t is 3, and... Uh, v is negative 1, and we can use the point-slope form to find the equation of each one of these lines. So in order to start, let's write our piecewise function for the velocity. Okay? Okay, first one. We've got if t is between 0 and 3 seconds, then we have the function of, for this line right here, going between the points 0, 2, and 3, negative 1. Let me make my scribbles go away. That would be given by the equation v is negative t for our negative 1 slope, and then plus 2 for the uh, v-intercept. Then, for t goes from 3 to 4, uh, whoops, some of these aren't showing up. There we go. Okay, t goes from 3 to 4. Now we're at this section of our graph, and let's see, it goes from 3, negative 1 to, what's that, 4, 2. So again, finding the equation of the line from 3, negative 1 to 4, 2, we come up with the equation 3t minus 10. Okay, and then lastly, when t is between 4 and 5, uh, t is between 4 and 5, we have the final chunk going from 4, 2 to 5, 0. So this function is going to be negative 2t plus 10. Okay, if that's the velocity, we need to find position. We need one more piece of information. They told us at the beginning of the problem that I didn't write down, but we can assume that our starting position is zero. Okay? Okay, let's start by taking the antiderivative of each piece of this. So s of t for t goes from zero to three, so we'll do zero to three here. So s of t, the antiderivative for just the top part, is going to be negative t squared over 2 plus 2t plus, my pluses and t's aren't turning out very well, uh, negative t squared over 2t, negative t squared over 2 plus 2t plus our first constant. We need to figure out what that constant is, so plugging in our initial condition, we have s of 0 is equal to 0. That would give us 0 for the t squared, 0 for the 2t, and that it just equals c1, so c1 has to be equal to 0. So for the first part of our piecewise function, s of t equals negative t squared over 2 plus 2t, whoops, <laughs> plus 0, plus nothing. Now what's really important is that our 0 was in that domain uh, between 0 and 3. When we go to the next function, we want to keep making this a continuous function, so we're going to want to match up um, endpoints. So what I mean by that is, in the next piece, from t goes from 3 to 4. So when t goes from 3 to 4, we have s of t, so now I'm going to take the antiderivative of the 3t minus 10. So that would be s of t is 3t squared over 2 minus 10t plus another constant of integration, so plus c2. 
Okay, now unfortunately I can't plug in s of 0 equals 0 because 0 is not inside or on the boundary of one of those uh, of those t values. But I do know 3. This 3 is a boundary of one of uh, the value, t values in that interval and to make it continuous it's the end boundary in 0 to 3. So let's find from the first function what the s value should be at 3. That would be negative 9 over 2 plus 6. So negative 9 over 2 plus 12 over 2 is 3 over 2. So we have here that s of 3 equals 3 over 2. So s of 3, to make it continuous, should be equal to 3 over 2. So let's plug in t equals 3 into the next interval. That's going to be 3 times 9 is 27 over 2, minus 30, plus c2. Okay, and then solving for c2 here, let's see, that's going to be um, 3 over 2, equals 27 over 2 minus 60 over 2. 27, 60 minus 27 is 33, and when we solve that for C2, we've got C2 equals 36 over 2 or 18. So that gives us S of t equals, in this interval, 3t squared over 2 minus 10t, whoops, sorry, my, er, equal, plus 18, plus 18, cool. So there's our second one, and here was our first one. Okay, let me go to the next page and do the very last one. So we have s of t thus far. We've got the first one that was negative t squared over 2 plus 2t for t goes from 0 to 3. Uh, it was 3 over 2 t squared minus 10 t plus 18 for t ranging between 3 and 4. And then now our last one. On our last one, t goes from 4 to 5. We had, um, so let's see, from 4 to 5, we had v of t from the previous uh, page was given by, in this one, negative 2t plus 10. So the s of t, the antiderivative, would be t squared. Oh, I'm sorry. Negative, negative t squared plus 10t plus our third and final integration constant. Again, can't plug in s of 0 equals 0 because that's not in this interval. Can't plug in s of 3 is, what was that, 3 halves? Instead here, we need to figure out what s of 4 was from the previous one. So from 3 halves t squared minus 10t plus 18. So s of 4 gives us, what's that, 8 times 3 is 24 minus 40 plus 18. So this is going to be 24 minus 40. This s of 4 is going to be equal to 2. Okay, and then now you will take that from the previous interval, plug that in here s of 4 equals 2 equals negative 16 plus 40 plus c3 
And then solving for the last one, we've got C3 is going to be equal to negative 22. So that means, let me erase and give myself a little bit of room right here. And then rewrite that. So our last one is going to be negative t squared plus 10t minus 22. Beautiful. And there is our formula for position.